photo excitation gets electrons moving. And we briefly noted earlier that an excited state is both a stronger oxidizing agent and stronger reducing agent than its corresponding ground state. This means that excited states commonly engage in electron transfer processes, either donating an electron or accepting an electron, depending on what they're in the presence of. And so-called photo-induced electron transfer, or PET, processes are the subject of this series of videos. So we're going to look at some examples and applications of PET in this video series and dig into the theory, which includes some counterintuitive results concerning the relationship between the thermodynamic delta G for an electron transfer process and its rate, its rate constant. These are so counterintuitive and, and so interesting and so applicable in a variety of contexts that they earned their discoverer a Nobel Prize in chemistry. Let's begin with an introduction to electron transfer, and specifically, we are interested in electron transfers that are initiated or induced by the absorption of a photon, so-called photo-induced electron transfers involving an excited state molecule as either the electron acceptor or the electron donor. And so first, let's start with a definition. What we're going to call photo-induced electron transfer involves the transfer of an electron to or from an electronically excited state. And this piece is key. An excited state has to be involved in order for the electron transfer to be photo-induced. In fact, there are two ways this can happen involving oxidation or reduction of the excited state. In this first scheme, we have the absorption of a photon by a molecule M to form its excited state M star. M star reacts with a quencher Q in an electron transfer process. And we'll abbreviate this with lowercase et to distinguish it from the uppercase et of energy transfer that we looked at in the last video series. And what we end up with here is a radical cation of the former excited state m dot plus, and a radical anion of the quencher, q dot minus. From the perspective of the excited state, an oxidation process has occurred. m star is oxidized. Photo-induced electron transfer may also involve the acceptance of an electron by the excited state to form the radical anion of the former excited state and a radical cation of the quencher. In this situation, the excited state m star is reduced and accepts an electron from the quencher. And both of these processes are encouraged through photo excitation for reasons that we'll see shortly. Photo-induced electron transfer is a critical behavior of excited states in a variety of contexts. For example, in photosynthesis, where electron acceptors are positioned strategically near photo-excited states to encourage electron transfer. Photoredox catalysis, which by definition essentially involves a photo-induced electron transfer step where a photo-excited state, often of a transition metal complex like this of ruthenium or iridium, for example, donates an electron to or accepts an electron from an organic molecule, inducing a reaction from there that is catalytic in the sense that the ground state is then oxidized or reduced and again photo-excited to restart the cycle. Finally, photo-induced electron transfer is critical to the operation of photovoltaic cells, or what are more commonly known as solar cells. Absorption of a photon creates an electron-hole pair, and the transfer of the electron to a semiconducting layer gets current going in the photovoltaic cell. So what starts as a photo-excited state with, for example, two SOMOs, with the higher energy SOMO representing the electron and the lower energy SOMO representing the hole, becomes separated negative and positive charges after an electron transfer event. And that's critical to getting a voltage going and a current going across a load connected to a solar cell. Speaking of excited state SOMOs, let's remind ourselves briefly why excited states are both stronger oxidizing agents and stronger reducing agents than their corresponding ground states. This is a bit of a counterintuitive result until and unless you understand how photo excitation works, right? So we've, this is our very simple two-level model of photo excitation. This should say LUMO, not HOMO. We have a HOMO and LUMO on the ground state of M. Upon photo excitation, one electron is elevated to a higher energy state, and we end up with what we might call a SOMO H for higher energy SOMO and a SOMO L for lower energy SOMO, each one containing one unpaired electron. The higher energy electron we can think of as reducing because that is an electron that has been elevated in energy, and the lower energy vacancy that has been created in the SOMO L we can think of as a hole. This is the language used in the photovoltaic literature, for example. The hole here has oxidizing power, and the electron here has reducing power. 
And so we can talk about oxidative or reductive quenching of an excited state depending on what happens. Is the electron donated or is an electron accepted? In an oxidative quenching situation, the electron in the SOMO H is donated to the quencher, forming the radical cation of the former excited state and a radical anion of the quencher. In so-called reductive quenching, the excited state accepts an electron from Q, forming the radical anion of the original excited state, M, and the radical cation of Q. Photoexcitation enables these processes, makes them more energetically favorable because it does two things. First of all, it takes the hole in the ground state, which we could argue is in the LUMO of the ground state, and lowers it in energy, making it more favorable for an electron to occupy that hole. The second thing it does is it elevates the energy of an electron, increasing the reducing power or reducing potential of that electron. With the pretty straightforward understanding of the oxidation and reduction potentials involved here and the electronic excitation energy associated with M, we can do some thermodynamic calculations to get an idea of the thermodynamic energy change, the free energy change associated with the photo-induced electron transfer process. We'll look at an example of that in detail in a future video. And that'll put a quantitative spin on this idea that electronic excitation makes both oxidative quenching and reductive quenching of M more favorable.